Thanks for joining us for another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. John, pause, Davidson. <laughs> um, so this week, we are going to talk about um, some exercise, bringing in exercise that you can do at home, right? So you don't have to have a gym membership. You don't have, a ha- have to have expensive equipment. Uh, just kind of give you guys some ideas on how to do things at home. So let's start out. What did you what What have you done this past two weeks? What have I done? Yeah. Anything are we talking, interesting? Are we still talking about exercising? No. <laughs> oh, no. In oh, general. Oh, oh no, I I did that Wim Hof cold immersion training. Yeah. What? Tell me about Dude, this. That was really cold. That's what that was. <laughs> so really, they really they cold. took you and submerged you in cold water. Is that? Well, uh, I'll summarize it into maybe three pillars. The first pillar was breath work. Um, so we spent quite a long time talking about diametric, diametric breathing, those type of things. Uh, there's a, we did an interview on it. We, we talked about uh, in the last Lunch and Learn. Uh, but basically, uh, the, climb, the, you, the ending or the, I don't, they don't get an award or anything, is that, yeah, getting completely in... So head and everything, you're completely submerged in water. So people did do the head. I did not do the head. I went all the way up to my neck. Okay. And I mean, it's ice water. So yeah, it was. What kind of temperature are we talking? I mean, it's. I mean, we're talking. There's three or four inches of ice. On oh my top goodness. Of water. I mean, it's it's you know freezing cold. How long did you have to stay in there? Only ninety seconds. Oh, only. That yeah. sounds like a long time. And it was crazy cold. long. As a matter of fact, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd ever do it again, but it was a nice so what was the purpose? challenge. <clears throat> well, there's a lot, and I'm not going to – you just really should listen to the interview if you – on the all the reasons why, because they talk about the studies and those type of things. Okay. But, but basically, it does brown fat activation. Okay. And it's also a mental challenge, for sure. So there's a kind yeah, of – Yeah, the mental that. part I could totally see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I'm thinking that's part of the breathing is to mentally prepare you a little bit. Yes, so nor well, yeah, um, but uh, it's. Uh, but what was your reason for doing it? I mean, well, I wanted to do the breath work for sure. Okay. Uh, because that's something that is I'm not very strong in, and then uh, the cold water immersion it is really, I mean, is really the mental challenge. I I wanted. Uh, so are there health benefits to doing this, or is it really... You really, you really should listen I, to the interview. Well, I know, but give us some <laughs> teasers so we go listen to it. Yes. So okay. it, uh, the cold water immersion basically stimulates uh, you converting fat to brown fat. And brown fat is healthier for you, and it's, a, it is a, it's what you, your body uses to regulate your body temperature. Gotcha. Okay. And that's just... I mean, it's way more complicated than that, but I'm trying to make it super simple, yeah. Sure. But yeah, the interview, on the interview we talked about, his name is Jesse, uh, we, we went into scientific studies and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, okay. And we can link that um, in our show notes. Sure. For... We said that last week, though. We, I mean, last time we didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. So That's make because me do sometimes it. Make I don't do take it. very good notes. Make, make me do it. I'll do it. Okay. But how about you? Um, dairy, dairy yeah, free. so still dairy free. Um, it's getting easier. I've, I'm kind of shocked about that, but I still have not seen any results. So it has my headaches have not lessened. Um, I am rejoicing in that. Honestly, I'm very happy that I'm not getting any relief. Uh, I understand that, but <laughs> so weird. I know it does sound weird. Um, the I, I, so I've done four of the uh, fecal samples that we talked about last time. I've gotten results for three. So from test, from results one to two, I had some improvement, but then now I have a result from the third one, and it's back to as bad and worse in some areas. So uh, still not really sure. I reached out to them. They have not responded on how to analyze this or what I'm supposed to do with it. More to come. I'm but, always, I'm yeah. always about poop. So, yeah. So I did um, take a plunge and started eating sauerkraut. So I have I have always said I don't like it, but to be completely honest, I do not think I've ever actually tried it in my life. So as a child, 
I was very big on textures and smell, and if it, or even the name, because sauerkraut sounds disgusting, that probably was why I didn't eat it. Then my mom's house stunk up because it is a horrible smell. So I'm positive after tasting this that I had never eaten it before. And oddly, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. And well, there's also a big difference if you're getting it out of a can versus. Yeah, so I bought this. I don't know. It was some Polish um, brand. Uh, I, I know, Again, I know nothing about it, so I have no idea whether the brand was good or not. And after talking to some people online, if you heat it, it kills some of the bacteria. So I took it right out of the cupboard, ate it not hot. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that it didn't taste like rotted food, which is what I was expecting because, you know, it is fermented, so I thought it was going to taste disgusting. No, next time I want you to try it, <laughs> just make it as horrible sounding as possible. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, it actually tastes more pickled than it does fermented. And, again, that sounds like a bad word. Fermented is rotting food. So I, I ate it um, three meals yesterday. I ate it one meal the day before, and I have it for lunch today. Uh, not hungry, so I don't know whether I'll actually eat it until dinner, but... Um, Did you ever look at just drinking a kombucha? I, you know, I have heard of that, but I don't really know what it is. But there were a few people online who as well um, recommended kimchi and kombucha. Yeah, kim so, yeah, so... I will check uh, into them. I've never admitted to this, but I, I, I made kombucha for a while, and it was a disaster every time. <laughs> So let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So again, like I don't really even know what kombucha is. I've heard of it. Um, yeah. It's a whole conversation we should have at another time, probably. Yeah. But, so, but basically, there's it's the back there's a it's called a mother that it's like it's like an, an almost like an organism that that oh, eats so. sugar and grows. Oh, and so similar to grows. the apple cider vinegar. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh yeah. Sure, you put which actually. I drink every day, so yeah, well, very similar then. Yeah, but it's an entire drink. You got to be careful because they, they put a lot of you can buy sugary kombuchas, they add stuff to the kombucha, make it taste good, like mm. fruit juice and whatnot. So, you got to be careful. Yeah, so I'm trying to, to do good health, good gut health on my own before I get the results, but yeah. we'll see, we'll see what they say. Huh. All right. Well, the gauntlet was thrown via a question at some point, and I don't remember when we got this or what it is. But just to kind of harpen back to, we've talked, about, you know, callbacks to the top before, but to topics we talked callbacks to topics we've talked about before. There, I got it. <clears throat> um, we we we've mentioned plenty of times that weight management is better done through diet than exercise. But that said, there there still is the value in exercise. Obviously, I teach group fitness, so I feel that way. But going back to the challenge, the challenge was because we work in a corporate world where a lot of people have to travel, it was, I want a idea of an uh, some type of exercise routine I can do in my hotel room. And uh, with that, I, I kind of took on, I won't say I took on that challenge, but I, I put together what I would do, and I've done this before. Um, I think I, uh, you know, I've done it many times. Uh, we've we talked about air squats plenty of times, so just a quick reminder on air squats. If you're not, if you're not comfortable with doing squats, then just basically sit into a chair, and we can um, reference the five by when we were talking about the five by fives. We went into a lot more detail on squats. But to start off my little ho my little hotel um, a challenge for a workout, uh, just about 20 to 30 air squats. For me, air squats gets the body moving, and it's not about how fast you're doing it. You want to you want to work on solid form. So get the depth, use the chair if you need to, those type of things. But start to get the blood pumping by doing air squats. So if I've never done You've a never squat before. So can you walk me through, like, what you would do with your body? So yeah. do you put your arms out? How far apart is your legs? Okay, so, so for a squat, um, the reason I said use a chair is because when we talked about this before, um, it's a great visual in your head. 
because we all sit in chairs and get out of chairs. So we're all kind of familiar with that. But basically, if you think about the, the way your body moves, you take your butt back and down like you're going into the chair. You keep your body braced. And then you mentioned your arms. Arms actually aren't as important. So if you are struggling with balance, then you put your arms out in front of you. It's more as like a counterweight. Uh, for me, uh, because I'm more athletic, I tend to move, like automatically move my, like, you know, bend my elbows and, and almost like I'm, uh, you know, guarding my face or something like that. Maybe that's from my uh, old, old kickboxing days. But uh, I drop my, my elbows down and then I basically use just enough uh, forward that they just gives me enough that I can get low. I tend to go a little bit lower in my squat. I, I break the plane. So if you're still thinking about the chair, it would be going slightly below where the chair's seat would be. But that's because I have no knee problems. I got no... And when you say break the plane, you mean that you take your your squats, you reduce your knee less than 90 degree. Is that correct? Yeah. Um so that's probably more for an advanced person versus someone who is just starting out. So I would, yeah, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a ton of time in mental cycles on the ninety degree piece because sitting in a chair is below ninety degrees because of where where you are. If you sit in a chair and your feet are touching the floor, and <laughs> sorry, I'm actually turning and sitting in a chair. Uh, you can't see that, but uh, but I am. Um, that would be a perfect 90 degrees. Now, if you're not sitting in a chair and you're doing it in place, your feet are not actually going to be out as far. They're not going to be as far forward as when you're sitting in a chair. So if you're so if you're new to squats and you're sitting in a chair, uh, it will be more like 90. But don't feel like you need to stop at 90 if you're if you're doing air squats and you're comfortable with it. So I, I over-explained air squats, I think. No, I don't, I don't think so, because I, for you, you are very athletic, and that makes total sense to you. But if it's somebody coming into this who has never done this before, I think giving them instruction on how to do an air squat is, is a good thing. All right, so if you're in the room, uh, so what you should say I have there, so that's a 90 degree bend right there. So I'm not even... 90 degrees? All right, so, okay, so I'll stop doing this since the majority of you guys are on the phone. <laughs> but, yes, 90 degrees. Uh, the, if it's confusing for you, then just Google it. Obviously, a 90-degree bend in your knee would be, would be an exact, like, you know, the bottom part of the triangle. So for sitting in a chair, if you put your feet back to where... They would be in the middle of your. Man, how do I? How do I keep over explaining the squats? If you put your feet back, it would actually go below and back into the middle of where you, where you're sitting in a chair. So I think. Okay. So let's let's reel it back a little bit. So high level for an air squat, you want to make sure that you are pushing your butt back. Butt back so I would like say butt back and down. Yeah. So that your knees are not going to go over the tip of your toe when you're actually bent. And then if you are new to this and you feel uncomfortable, you can put your arms out in front of you to counter the weight. And you also can put a chair behind you so that you can touch your bottom to the chair and then stand back up. So in case you lose your balance, you have the chair there to catch you. Or sit in the chair. And then get back up. I mean, you know, uh, you know, don't feel bad if you need to use the chair. <clears throat> okay. All right. So the next thing I do, and I'll try not to spend five minutes on each, <laughs> each exercise, but uh, is the incline push-up. And the, you may not need to do an incline push-up. So let's talk about push-ups really fast in just general. So push-ups is one of those things that everybody pretty much has at least seen them as comfortable with, they may not be comfortable doing them, but if you walk through the push-ups, there's different degrees. So the easiest way to do a push-up, obviously, would be, and 
depending on the quality of hotel you're staying in, you may not want to directly lay right down on the floor. But uh, I, because I, uh, I tend not to, I when I drop into a push-up position, I basically go from like a, a plank or something like that. So I don't actually lay on the floor first. So what, whatever you're comfortable with, if you've never done a push-up before, I would recommend trying it at your house. Lay completely on the floor, and then take your upper body. Keep your upper body, like your spine, straight. Leave your knees on the floor, and then just put your hands right outside of where your shoulders would be, and then lift your upper body. Now, if you have struggle with that, as you're going up, you shift your weight back over your feet. So think about a push-up, and if you've seen them done on, on the, in the movies or whatever, you know, the people are all, all the way on your toes, but you're not going to go all the way on your toes. You're just going to shift the weight back. When you shift your weight back, it's almost like you're doing a downward dog or something where you're taking your butt back over, and all you're doing is re- re- relieving the weight and putting it over your feet which is just going to, to make it a little bit easier. And you, you can, uh, then you'll work your way up to where you have to do that less and less and less. And then once you're comfortable doing them on your knees, you can do them on your toes. And then if I'm in a hotel and I'm doing it, then I actually find something to put my toes up on. So that would be like the, a, so that could be that same chair or it could be the edge of a, of a you know, like a, in a hotel, there's always something that's a little bit lower. The higher you get your feet, the more weight is going to be on your upper body and, and into those push-ups. So I'm going to throw one out here. And again, today I'm playing devil's advocate because John is very well versed in um, exercise, but not devil's advocate. Not all of us are. <laughs> So I, I try to come up with things so that I can help my mother, who's 76. Now, she is not able to get on the floor. Great idea. But if we were, if we were wanting to um, switch this up, so what I have um, tried to get her and my father-in-law to do is to either use the sink. So in a hotel, you could use the wall, right? But you would just stand away from the wall, and then you still would do a push-up but you're doing it vertically so that you're getting the benefit of the arms. But if you cannot get on the floor, that is um, an alternate way that you could do them. Yeah. The further back from the wall you stand, the more resistance you're going to get in your push-up um, or whatever you want to call that. But you're still working the same muscle groups. Yeah, so in a uh, great point. So for getting uh, the opposite of getting on the floor, but... Um, the against the wall is going to be harder to make it harder. <laughs> it's going to be hard, harder to make it make it more of a workout. So yep. if, if you really just are struggling, the when you mentioned like on the sink or the desk, those those options are you're going to be able to get your body over the object, and that that'll be able to make it harder. So so if you're going to rate those as from a scale of you know, of complex, not complexity, of difficulty. Obviously, um, incline, like we talked about, with your feet up on something is going to be the hardest. Uh, when you are standing, then it's going to be dress or something that's a little bit lower. And the higher that object gets, the easier it's going to be for you. Yep. Yep. All right. <clears throat> and then, uh, so moving from push-ups, then uh, luggage, I call it luggage rows. <laughs> you call it a suitcase. Uh, row, but um, if your suitcase, and obviously if it's hard, you would just do it empty, but uh, but it would just be a slight squat enough to that you can grab the handle, and then you're, you stand up, and then you just take your elbow towards the back of the room, and you drag the suitcase along your leg. And all, so you're lifting it off the ground. All you're doing is lifting it off the ground. Okay. As your elbow goes back, you are doing a row. So think about, you know, a bicep curl. It's coming out in front of you, but this is not a bicep curl. It's a row. So it's just going to come along right around your leg and then set it back down on the ground. You can do 10 on one side 
and then switch to the other side. Isn't that funny how I have to actually do it? <laughs> He's demonstrating. I'm demonstrating. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I've got to so, do So you take the object, and we can use anything, right? So we're talking about hotel here, but if you're at home, you can use a gallon jug of water. Right. You can use whatever. But you would actually put it touching your legs and then run it up your thighs to where your elbows are going behind you right. as you're lifting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then to your point, obviously for a suitcase, you only have one or you have two suitcases and they are not even. If you're at home and you have two gallons of water, then you can do both hands at the same time. There's nothing that says that you can't do two hands at the same time. The only reason we're talking about that is, is in a hotel, it's rare that you have two objects of the same. You don't really want to do two rows with an uneven amount. I mean, you technically can if they're closed, but... Uh, it's it's a little bit. But easier. you're taking the risk of maybe injury if you're doing a heavier weight on one side at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then uh, the last thing that uh, I like to do is, well, for me, I do some type of uh, basically crunch cross crawl thing. Uh, so just for those you guys who. Um, one a little more advanced option it would be if I, if my back was on the floor, I twist across my body like I'm bringing my elbow across and I extend my opposite leg. That is called a cross crawl. So basically, if you think about crawling on the floor like an army guy, but you're on your back, that movement of pulling your knee forward, when you pull that knee forward, you just bring your elbow across. That's a cross crawl. Now, that's going to be really hard to do, um, so, so, and there is no low option, except technically there's a low option of, of tapping that foot on the floor and, and taking the body weight out of your feet. But instead, we're going to talk about a reverse crunch. So before I go to the reverse crunch, do you have any questions for me on a cross crawl? Yeah, so on a cross crawl, I'm laying on my back. Laying on your back. Do I lift my shoulders off the floor as I'm doing the crossing of the elbow and the knee? Yep. Do I yeah, lift my a, hips at all? Great question. No. That's, okay. a, that's, a, that's a fantastic question because a lot of people will lift their hips and you're not supposed to. Okay. So it's only upper body that's going to be leaving the floor as I'm trying to touch my elbow. And when I say trying... You can't, I mean, there are different levels of challenge there as well, right? So Yeah. And, and to be fair, technically, I probably don't, don't touch my elbow. I don't know. <laughs> okay, he's going to get on the floor and do it. <laughs> eh, no, I guess I do. But that's not as important. So What's that would be more advanced, is right? Your chest opened. Your goal is to try to get the two to touch. But doing the proper technique, again, like you said, important. so... Much more important that your hips stay on the floor. Start out square. You lift one shoulder off the ground at a time as you're attempting to touch the yep. opposite elbow and knee, yep. but your hips stay in place and the rest of your body stays flat on the ground. Yep. Okay. And again, that's, that's a high option. So what's a reverse crunch? So, so in that uh, cross-crawl idea, you're crunching diagonally across your body. So let's ask this. If I, say we're, say again, I can't get on the floor. I'm, for whatever reason, can't get on the floor. Could you do that standing up? Could you, I mean, I know the difficulty would not be the same. Oh, you mean like a knee lift? Yeah, but like, could you try to, as you're, as you're doing it, because I'm assuming that you're crunching your stomach muscles together, and that's what the goal is, is to work the core. So if you're standing vertically, could you still squeeze your stomach together trying to keep your body square other than your shoulders are the one thing? I mean, te technically you can, but I, but I find in, in working with folks that if that uh, standing up, you have to have a significant amount of balance to be able to do that. So okay. I, I can do that without any problem. But if somebody's struggling with a cross crawl, then they're probably not going to be able to do it standing. Could they maybe stand holding a counter or something with one hand and then trying to crunch just to keep stability? <clears throat> um, no. Well, technically, you could. I'm just trying to, you know. You're trying, if, you're trying to challenge me to think of something that I could do cross-sling-wise while standing. And uh, it definitely could. 
I gotta have to stand up again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So you would, I think for that one, you're going to have to have more mental clarity of what you're doing, right? So you're going to have to be more cognizant to try to squeeze those muscles versus laying down when you're actually making the movement. Your body is forcing you to do those contractions. Whereas when you're standing up, you're, you're probably going to have to really focus on doing it, but it, there is an alternate. Yeah. I, yeah. I just don't want you to So you're going to automatically lean forward when you're doing it standing. And that's going to put a little more pressure on your balance. So I have no problem with balance. But if going back to when you challenged me before, you said my grandma. I mean, or, you know, my mom. Your, oh, sorry. That's all right. your, your, your mother. And uh, now you're, you're going. I mean, if you're if you're going to work on getting all those muscles to crunch. So hey, so just so you guys know on the phone. Now you're standing up. So, <laughs> I did. So, so yeah. Uh, so, uh, but in order to crunch them all the way across, yeah, you're you're going to end up leaning pitching forward a little bit and okay. even if you're if you're leaned back up against a wall or something uh you're you're not going to be able to come all the way forward okay so but what you can do from a reverse crunch perspective so let's say you're still in a hotel room or whatever so in a reverse crunch technically you're going to lay back on the bed and you're going to bring your feet forward and then if you can either take them up towards the ceiling, or bring your knees in so your knees are coming up over your hips. Either way, your entire hip or your pelvis, or if you want to think about rotation, you're going to rotate with your knees so the, so the, the part of your butt that's the closest to the edge of the bed is going to come up slightly so that you're going to be crunching in. Okay. So, in a regular crunch, you bring your entire body forward. That that you can still technically do that on a bed. But there's a lot of give. I mean, you can lay your feet across the bed and you can come forward. But I think a reverse crunch is a little easier. And then the opposite, or not the opposite, but the thing you can do that aligns with that is just keeping your feet and extending them out, um, kind of like a modified iron cross in. For an iron cross, really, that just means that you're lifting your upper body at the same time. But it would just be your feet extending out, and it's starting to work not just your your core down the middle, but starting to get your hip flexor and everything else. So the reverse crunch, think about just like you would do a crunch, but in obviously reverse. Why they call it a reverse crunch? Fantastic. Description, huh? So for me, I do um, I do that in my office chair. So again, for somebody who is not able to, well, everybody should be able to lay on the bed, but not everybody may have the strength to pull their legs up. But I I do this in my office chair. So you're sitting in the the seated position in your chair already, and so as I'm typing, I will just lean forward and try to suck my belly button in and then crunch my top and bottom muscles together to try to bend in half a little bit. Um, probably not, or well, not probably, there's nowhere near the benefit you're going to get from doing an actual crunch, but you're at least doing something as you're sitting in your chair um, during your work day. So that's just something that I do. Um, I also perform some oblique exercises while I'm sitting, but... Oh. All right, so crunches. Uh, the last one I always do is lunges. Um, I am weird in that I do lunges really slow. And the reason I do that is because my knees have, I wouldn't say stability issues, but whenever I have high loaded weight, um, like the lunge is the absolute worst thing for me. It's the, I use the least amount of weight. And uh, the reason is when you step back, uh, let's, first off, let's talk about the basics uh, of a lunge. Um, so in a squat, you're going straight down. In a lunge, you're stepping one foot back. Now the key is you keep your feet shoulder width apart. 
when you step back, it stays shoulder width apart, so that gives you the stability so you're not shifting left and right. If you find yourself going left and right like you can't keep your balance, then your feet aren't shoulder width apart. They're, they're narrow. When you don't realize it, when you step back, you, most people when they step back, step their foot in closer. Right. Okay, so I when you said lunge, I was thinking of side lunges. You actually are standing with your feet together, and you step backward Back. to do, what are those called, scissor lunges or something? Uh, well, um, technically, scissor lunges, you do them super fast. And, yeah. so, and what you're talking about is a side lunge. So from a lunge perspective, a basic lunge, I think, is technically straight back, but it doesn't really matter. So let's, let's break into to a couple different pieces then. So if we go with the way I described it, that would be a backward stepping lunge. The leg that you're going to, to do mo the majority of the work in stays put, and you step the other foot back. Okay. So now, well, the reason why I do them slowly and I don't do the scissor lunges, uh, scissor lunge would be like faster, and you would basically propulsion, you'd like pop yourself up, and you switch feet really fast. Okay. Now that's very difficult for people to do and hold solid form. So uh, we actually, even even today, I, I do not do scissor lunges personally. And, and the reason is, is because when I do scissor lunges, my knees start to come in. Okay. And when my knee buckles in, I know I'm putting a uneven amount of stress on it. So that's why I personally don't do it. So when you step back and you are going into a lunge, and we're still talking about backward stepping lunges, that knee should not come forward. So if you think about it, that knee, it's going to stay over the foot, not coming in and towards your body. It stays over the foot. And as long as that's staying over the foot, then you're not putting excess strain on your knee. Now, side lunges. Oh, good. You any questions about well, I No, I was really just going to ask, and I'm glad you're going into side lunges, but I was going to ask the difference. I mean, I know physically what the difference is, but do they work different muscle groups? Why would you do one versus the other? Um, it, it, so technically it does work the muscles a little bit different, but personally I, we almost do them more for variety than anything, so you don't get bored doing the same thing over and over again. Okay. Uh, you, you, so when you step back, especially slow and controlled, you do tend to work your the muscles are slightly different. But it's from a from an overarching standpoint, I would I wouldn't spend any too much time on that. A side lunge. Sometimes also you tend to let momentum get the best of you. So let me explain that as I first explain a side lunge. And then we're going to have to talk about the band later. We've done spent so much time doing body weight. We haven't even talked about we'll to do the band on it another time. The side lunge, for me, I find it the best. And this depends a little bit um, on your, your mechanicals of, of how comfortable you are with your, your wrist. Sorry, your wrist. Your ankles. I tend to go forward. So... You know, textbook, you would go straight to the side. And when you do that, you extend. So if I'm stepping to the right, you would extend your left foot so it is completely straight. And you come down on, on that right foot and you lean slightly forward. And it's, again, obviously, like anything we're doing, this is a podcast, so... It's confusing. Just Google it so you can watch somebody else do it. But that would be two shoulder widths, maybe a little bit more off to the side. So you are coming all the way over and down onto your foot. And then you come all the way back to the center. And then you would go the other direction, obviously. But the premise is still you always keep your knee above your foot and never let it go past the tip of your toes, right? Yeah. Um, well, your stationary leg, I should say. Your stationary leg should stay. Say, yeah, so, so the one you're going out on is going to stay straight. But, but, uh, but yes, you would still not come all the way in. So it, and the reason why is 
so of why they work the muscles differently is when you do a side lunge, you end up putting the majority of your weight on the foot that's on the outside. So if you're stepping to the right, all of that comes down on the right. When you step back, there's still a, a, di a differential where you still have some weight in the front foot and one in the back. So that, those, are the, those are why they, they work the muscles slightly different. Now, I tend to go forward slightly, almost like I'm going at like a 30 degree angle or something. And that's just more, much more comfortable for me. If you find that you're putting pressure on your ankle because you're going all the way to the side and you don't like the way it feels, try coming, coming forward, okay. even just a couple of inches. Now, uh, with both sets of lunges, you can still do the jar of water. It's a little harder to use your suitcase, but technically you could lift your suitcase over your head if you wanted. A little comfortable with that. And that would be on the outside or on the step back. You would just take the weight and just bring it in over your head. And it wouldn't be directly over your head because it'll just feel more comfortable if it's an inch or two in front. But that will force you to keep your body braced, even if it's just five pounds. Um, it, it will your, it'll help remind your body to keep it yourself braced. Okay, cool. Oh, and then, of course, there's lots of other things I do in the hotel. But I mean, a lot, unless you stay in really nice hotels, they don't usually have a gym. Um, and that's just usually enough. And then we've talked about HIT before. So you're not going to do these particular moves into a HIT sequence, for you know, but you can easily do... Uh, hit moves in between them. So that would be like, okay, I'm going to do jumping jacks or, you know, hovering, you know, uh, low to your legs. So after your air squats, you can just hold a squat position and, you know, those type of things. You can, you know, obviously layer onto those things. But or you could even go run the stairs, right? You can go run the stairs, yep, for sure. So, yeah, there you go. That's what I do in a hotel room. So challenge accepted. That's what I do. Uh, we'll put we'll put a, a little starter hotel um, sequence in the show notes. Yeah, cool. All right. So next we're gonna, we're gonna save the bands. So the, the right. band is what I travel with. Um, I teach CX works, so we use the band all the time. And uh, without going into a lot of detail, think about like just a ginormous rubber band with two handles on it. And uh, we won't be, it'll be next month, but we'll go through some basic stuff. And again, that's a little harder to explain on a podcast, but again, people are asking, so yeah. figure we need to. So the next one we are doing is uh, question and answer again. So our next live show, which will be in two weeks, we'll do question and answer. If you guys have any, please uh, be sure to submit those over to me. We'll get those entered for the next time. We do have a few that were left over from last week, our last show. So we'll, like, we'll get to those if those were your questions and we did not answer last time. Apologies, but we'll get to those uh, next show. And again, if you guys have anything, you can reach us at ketoniancorner at gmail. You can reach us ketoniancorner.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So uh, also remember, go out and do iTunes review, except now it's called something else, Apple Apple review or something I heard. So uh, go out there, give us reviews on whatever you're listening to us from. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in a couple weeks. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in.